Rebecca Sugar knows how to make their fans fall in love with their work. Their music stands out as personal, raw, and sometimes downright haunting. Their characters share expressions with a certain emotional ambiguity. Their stories linger in your mind, always asking you to think about what you've seen. This air of the grand, the unknowable, the unsettling, is rooted in the theory of sublime art. While studying at the School of Visual Arts NYC, Sugar was enrolled in a class taught by this man, Bill Beckley, whose work explores the sublime. Sugar described what they learned from Beckley in beautiful detail in a 2014 interview where they summarized sublime art as unframable. It's an image or idea that implies that there's a bigger image or idea that you can't see. The sublime is everywhere in Sugar's work. In their episode, I Remember You from Adventure Time, the glimpses the audience sees of Marceline and Simon during the aftermath of an apocalypse are alluringly brief. In Steven Universe's Laser Light Cannon, the sublime appears in how the viewer is presented with tantalizing pieces of the past, including that, somehow, this deadbeat car wash owner had a half-human son with a deceased magical warrior goddess. In fact, though Adventure Time is also a great example, it's in Steven Universe that Sugar has really shown just how powerful sublime framing is. Just about every aspect of the storytelling in Steven Universe is framed in this purposefully limited way. Inspired by the constraints of early video games and their limited sprite art, and how that limitation sparked the imagination of players, Sugar came up with their own constraint that the show always take place from Steven's perspective alone. That framing contributed to Rose's slow reveal in the first season of Steven Universe, where she existed first only in the brief anecdotes told by the gems, and then slowly was revealed through the things she left behind on Earth, all while her face remained conveniently masked in Steven's house. It also led to Lapis's shocking mid-season reveal, slowly unnerving us in the first half of its special, then making us feel completely at loss at the nature of the gems themselves in the second half, right along with Steven. Having the show be from Steven's perspective was smart in all sorts of ways, but it also contributed to that sublime feeling that there was always more, that the picture was never quite complete. All cartoons have something innate to them that make them rich for sublime experiences. Sugar shared in an interview with Polygon in 2019 that this sublime feeling is achieved almost sort of by accident all the time, because you cannot show everything, and every moment that you're seeing something, it's a drawing, and nothing else but that exists. In order to enjoy it, you have to believe that the drawing's real, but in order to believe that, you have to enter a sublime artwork because you're convincing yourself that this place exists, and it doesn't. And everything you're seeing is a little nod to the fact that there's a bigger world that just isn't there. One of my all-time favorite moments of Steven Universe comes at the very end of Rose's Scabbard, and it captures so succinctly this sublime feeling I've experienced so many times with Sugar's heart. After seeing Pearl lose herself in Mourning Rose and lashing out at Steven, the two reconcile and bond over taking out items from Lion's Mane. This sequence is great because it decides to remove the dialogue and lets us imagine instead what Pearl is recounting to Steven. But then a chilling moment happens right after in this closing shot. As Steven and Pearl ride away from the battlefield, both looking out into the distance, Pearl looks down at Steven for just a second. It's subtle and fast, but when you notice it, you realize it breaks that rule of Steven's perspective just a little. Steven never sees this glance, but we do. It's eerie. We can't read what she's really thinking here either. Her expression suggests that maybe she's not quite sure herself yet how to feel about Steven. I remembered this moment when I was reading that Adventure Time interview, and Sugar was talking about the movement to sublime art in modern art, saying, My teacher described it as the difference between a sort of cute pinup drawing of a smiling woman and then the more modern model, sort of staring off into the distance, and you can't tell what they're thinking, and they look depressed? What that's trying to achieve is the sublime. Something's wrong, and you don't know what it is, and that's a powerful idea. That theme of hidden sorrow was embedded in that downward glance. 
and it was a part of so many other important character moments in Steven Universe, even for its biggest villains. But it also was developed through the ending theme Love Like You, which started as lyricless, and over the course of a couple seasons, expanded into a ghostly ballad about regretting not being able to express or experience love to match how it's been shown to you. Love Like You was reinforcing that sublime feeling every episode, prodding you to remember that longing feeling for understanding love that Rose and the other characters had lurking in the background. Sublime storytelling has made some of my favorite shows and games stick with me unrelentingly throughout the years. It's one of the reasons I return to the Portal and Half-Life universes so many times in my teens, with their environmental wordless storytelling, and why seemingly simpler shows like Hey Arnold have made me feel so curious and engrossed in their characters. It's why I remember Rebecca Sugar's Adventure Time episode so well, and it's how I feel every time I see the gorgeously detailed pilot of Steven Universe. Sugar knows the secret as to why sublime art becomes so integral to those who experience it. That area outside the frame, Sugar says, leaves the art and it's become your own invention. It's personal as well as being scary, as well as being beautiful. The viewer has to process the ambiguity of the art, and in turn it becomes a more personal experience. The fact that the sublime invites such a personal relationship is why I have such a deep love for Rebecca Sugar's stories.